<laughs> That's the best sound in Diesel I've literally ever heard in my life. Proudly supported by Superior Engineering and Diesel Conversions Australia. Right, we're back at King Fab Customs to pick up the patrol. Matt's been bloody slaving away on my car and he's absolutely killed it. It's in there, so let's go and have a look. Right, so Matt's had the car for about a week now and uh, it's basically all finished up. I was actually here yesterday with Matt all day and we were just buttoning everything up. So it's pretty well like 99% done, I'd say. We'll start over here at the airbox. We have his new, is it a nine inch? Nine inch pod box. Nine inch pod GUs, box. Yep. These are brand new. So if you wanna get one onto your GU, you can go onto his website and check them out. They suit the TDs, um, ZD30s. We still are finalizing a lot of the plumbing kits for them. So we've only got the plumbing kit for the ZD at the minute, but um, as time progresses, we'll we'll have all the plumbing for everything else. You can put it in your LS swaps and and in 4J swaps, all of it. Now I did actually swap to a TB45 uh, radiator, and the uh, water neck was failing on the box, so Matt's actually cut it and just shifted it ever so slightly, so we can run a top radiator hose, which is really good. This airbox um, is insane. Nine inch pod, heaps of airflow now. Following that is the um, cream of the crop of intake pipes here. We have a four inch seamless intake pipe. Now, not many people do seamless. I've actually never really seen it before on anyone's car. They always show the welds. If you don't know what seamless is, he's basically welded it and purge welded it. So it's really, really strong. Um, and then sanded out the weld and then polished it like a stainless snorkel. Matt really enjoys sanding welds <laughs> down. So if you are chasing intercooler piping, come in here and ask for it to be all seamless because he just loves doing it. Um, but <laughs> it's really just taking the build to the next level, like having it fully seamless. You can't see one weld on it and it just looks very crispy. Mm. Is what I'm gonna say about that. Downside to four inch at the moment is uh, the math is not gonna read correctly. It's too much air going past it. So it's gonna trigger the ECU into maybe limp mode. So Matt's also made up a little uh, pod filter with a three inch math in it. And we'll um, whack that on hopefully today. Hopefully today we are gonna get this thing at least driving. Yeah. The intercooler piping is two and a half inch. Now, basically Matt was telling me in his experience, if you go to three inch, you can get a lot of lag. So we kept it at two and a half inch. Did confirm with um, the bloke who's tuning it. He said two and a half is good for 400 horsepower. So we just left it at two and a half. So it's gonna be super responsive. Yeah. All seamless as well. That's all back purged. And yeah, it's all well to see. I mean, here. this is probably going to mean something to you welders out there, but he's back purged everything, which means that he fills the tube with gas first and then he welds it. Is that right? Yeah. Um, and that just makes the weld like super clean because TIG welding has to be very clean. So it's all welded internally. You're not going to get anything breaking off or running through your intercoolers into your turbos or that sort of thing. I've honestly never seen anyone do seamless before. In the engine bay? I've never seen yeah, it. Right. Yeah. Especially on a 4B. So world, world's first here, guys. Like you heard it here. The part that I was the most worried about was the dump pipe. Uh, when I dropped it off, I wasn't sure if Matt was even going to attempt it, but he's done it. He used a few of the things that I've dropped off. Um, I had some oval pipe, yep. is that what you call it? Oval pipe. I bought it off eBay. Um, wasn't the best quality stuff, but he made it all work. We were unsure if we were going to get the three inch between the firewall and the bell housing. So virtually, we, we had to do a three inch lobster off the um, flange on the back of the turbo. That came down into another series of lobsters to sort of get it through and that reduced down to the oval, oval yeah. that was supplied. Um, and it tucks right against the, what, what do you call it? That's the bell housing. Bell housing yeah, it's, tu it's kind of like tucked up against the sump of the, oh, it's in between it's the between bell the, the sump, sump and the bell, bell housing, yeah, because yeah. it's got to have clearance for the um, front drive shaft. Yeah. So that was fun to sort of get that all it's really, really complicated. Like bloody tight in there. Dipstick, adapter plate, transmission, motor, and all the fuel Manifold. lines. Like ev <laughs> everything is because the ZD30 turbo is on that side. Yeah. This side was like full of stuff that he's had to miss, and it was just I knew it was going to be complicated, which is why I didn't know if he was going to do it. But 
He's knocked that one out part two. It looks really good. We came in yesterday and heat wrapped it as well. Um, I did go a few more like heat wraps around where it's hugging the transmission. And I've also heat wrapped the um, transmission cooler pipes as well. So we shouldn't have too much heat transfer coming mm. off the dump pipe. Um, but we are just going to monitor it, eh? And Matt said he can easily make up like a heat shield yeah. where one needs to be. Okay. Yeah, it's all solid. It's all mounted. Oh, hard mounted, the dump bracket. All, yeah, yeah, that's all hard mounted. He made a little bracket to mount onto the transmission so it's kind of like locked in there and it's not going to vibrate and crack the turbo off or something like that. Also, in the intercooler piping, has done some barbs for the boost, um, boost gauge and boost reference for the turbo. And over here, there's actually a map sensor. Now, instead of putting a map sensor mount in, they'd basically just have a barb on the bottom of them. So he's just put a barb onto the intercooler pipe and then the map sensor is just plugged in like that. And that's great because I can just zip tie that one out of the way. We don't have like Hide an ugly it, yeah. sort of mount on there. Now, the other thing is the MAF mount. He's snuck up under this pipe here. So you can't even see the MAF. It's actually just, it's not plugged in at the moment, but it sits up under there. Um, that's really cool. Just trying to hide it as much as possible in the engine bay, make it look really tidy. So the front mount intercooler is basically mounted up under here. Now, was the pipe work hard with that? Oh, it was just a bit tricky through this side, having your, um, what is it, your transmission cooler lines running through there, the condenser, just getting it all to merge in to the turbo on this side was, it's tight, but it's, it's all in there. Yeah. One thing I sort of was worried about was the ECU bracket and the ECU being mounted there. Um, but he managed to snake through that pipe pretty easily, actually. Mm. Like, it fits quite nice, but yeah, some of the aircon stuff had to move, which is no big drama. That's basically the engine bay. We've still got to... <coughs> <coughs> um, we've still got a little bit of stuff to do. Like, we've got a radiator um, mount that you're supplying that is just yeah, the yep. cutters at the moment. Yep. So it's going to actually mount up here and hold this radiator and space it just off this um, rad support ever so slightly. Yeah, this one's a bit different to the standard GU ones, I'm pretty sure, because this sits lower, doesn't it? I yeah, this mentioned. this does sit lower. So if you, if you are following the build and doing mm. your own and you have this style radiator, um, just hit Matt up and maybe send a measurements, a few measurements, he yeah. might be able to just whack the same file out for you. So that's basically it in the engine bay. Now we've still got um, a snorkel, maybe two to show you guys. That's it in the engine bay. Thanks heaps to Matt for doing all this work and going the extra mile with sanding out those welds. Looks insane. No worries, mate. All right, should we show them the twins? <laughs> 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 Look, a lot of you guys aren't going to agree with this, but I think the car needed something a little bit snazzy on the front of it. Now, we could have gone ahead, we could have done a bonnet entry snorkel, but not a fan of it. Could have gone ahead, put a five inch snorkel on it. That would have maybe tricked it up a little bit, but not a fan of it. So what we've done is we've gone ahead to just annoy as many people as possible. In the last video dropping this off, we hinted that we were gonna do twins. Um, there's a top comment on that video, it has 30 something likes of people saying that they do not like twins. Now, to those people, I'm very, very sorry. It's gonna be really hard to see you guys leave, but you know, I've gone the twins and I absolutely love it. There's something in my brain that just sees something and if it's off center or something, it just wigs out. So we had to do twins because symmetricalness. And why not? What else are we gonna say? The other thing is that I'm going to be running a visor, which is one of those like grandpa spec visors up top. So these are to suit um, the visor. They will clear a lot of snorkels on the market. They won't clear a visor. They'll clash with it. Yeah. yeah so that's good, they're polished um, stainless and obviously seamless as well, but Matt has a whole heap of different options on his website. So yeah, snorkels, twins, done. And to the people that are thinking that they're gonna be a little bit wanky having a Bluetooth snorkel, um, we are actually gonna be using this one here for breather line. So we'll try and do a cap and a box of some sort, just some barbs in it, and then we'll run the breather lines into the box. Um, but that's gonna be down the ways. It's not gonna be happening anytime soon, but at yeah. least it'll be a useful snorkel. It's not just four looks, even though at the moment it is four looks, but I think it actually looks sick, personally. Yeah, so that is basically everything that Matt has done. Um, we've done the twins, the airbox, turbo pipe, dump pipe, basically all the fabrication that we needed to get this thing on the road. Now, there is um, a little bit of a confusion with the transmission programming, like there has to be a tune in the transmission for it to work. I've loaded a base file in there. Um, I need to do a little bit more tuning, and then we're probably gonna try and take it for a little uh, rip. We haven't heard the snorkel yet. We haven't started up with the snorkel in. 
Um, we've heard the exhaust, we'll do a few clips and start it up in a sec, but the exhaust actually sounds really good. I'm really surprised that a 4J sounds that good, mm -hmm. yeah, that exhaust. I think the manifold and all that's really helping with that. Right, Jesse's gonna start it up. This is actually one thing I'm really excited to show everyone is the noise coming out of this thing. So what we've actually done is we've done the dump pipe to the standard exhaust that I had, which is only like a really cheap mild steel exhaust, but surprisingly, it sounds really good. Start her up, mate. Right now the car's getting a little bit of a hose off. One thing we've noticed is that the motor is really knocky at the moment. Now we're sort of thinking that it's the plus 30 injectors. Um, it could also be that we don't have the math plugged in. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna chuck on the little pod filter that Matt's made up with the three inch math in it so we can actually plug the math back into it. Um, so we'll whack that on and see if it sounds a bit better. Got to put uh, water in the radiator as well because there's no water in it. Make sure that system's not leaking. A few more checks to do before we actually try and drive it. Now we are in an industrial area. So I'm thinking that if I can pull it out on the road and just run up and down, I'll be very happy because I can finally hear the scene and drive it for the first time. DNA all real. Sweat suit, all hill figure, and I ain't even got a deal with you. If I ain't never split a bill with you, I got Hennessy and Hort Chata. Uh -huh. Baby girl wearing Nada. Yeah. Growing from a cider. Uh -huh. Bad robe in his Prada. Hey. Fiji water by the cold glass. Granddaddy by the zip lock. Flex season, I'm roll running. I'm staying all on my tip top. All right, so this is a four inch intake pipe, and this is the little. Um, we're gonna call this the sex pipe. It's only got a three inch uh, inlet here, so the math's actually gonna read normal. Basically, we need to take this sensor off here, which is the math sensor, put that on here. We're gonna put that onto the motor, and we're hoping that the knock in the engine is gonna go away just by putting that on. But see the quality difference here? This is if you guys ordered it, and this is if you're an influencer. <laughs> <laughs> This is Matt's normal work on the TIG here, and then this is if you're an influencer, you get you get the seamless stuff. That's so much better. That I'll rev it though. That sounds way better. That's so much We're about to take it for the first drive. We've uh, topped up the transmission fluid. It was a little bit down. Um, everything is checking out to be all right. Like we've got all the parameters are all reading, the water temps reading right. We've filled up the radiator. So this is the first drive. Um, if it doesn't shift, I'm just gonna have to spin around, bring it back and wait for wholesale autos to um, give me a file. But if it shifts, I think it's pretty well basically done. But we're about to find out. We've got no thermo fans on, so we're just gonna have to keep an eye on the water temp. But. First drive, let's go. It's a weird sound in ZD30. Oh, oh shifted. Hey, second? Oh, second. Oh. <laughs> hey. You hear that turbo? That sounds sick. Pretty smooth. Feels good. It's good. It sounds good. Yeah. My seat's like reclined all the way back. But... That's a turbo that sounds noise. sick. <laughs> That's loud. Oh yeah. So gear one, temp fifty two. That's what we want to keep an eye on on the screen there. We've got water sixty one. It's all sounding good. I'll see if I can hold it. Listen to this thing, you ready? Woo! Oh! 
<laughs> Come here and do it. That's the on stick. Ready, go. <laughs> then nice. That sounded insane. That sounded even better outside than it did in the cab. Well, what about when the snorkel's on? Yeah, it's going to be right up on your. I was trying to say that to him before. I said when it's in the snorkel, it's going to be right. It'll in be your it'll be louder, snorkel. eh? Through a four inch pipe in the snorkel. Shit, yeah. Holy crap! We did one. We honestly did one that sounded Cooking like a, like an RB twenty six. Oh really? Yeah, it was we like had like two and a half grand. It literally what? went like <laughs> like that. Like it wasn't that just like it a light flutter. Too. Yeah, it was like a full it was like a full race car flutter. Imagine when you get a tune, it's gonna be sick. <laughs> and it sounds so it's much not better. It's a shit flutter too. You know how some of them are real. Pull! Yeah, that sounds so stupid. Yeah. I've never actually heard one of these flutter like that, eh? That is insane. That sounded that's the best sound in diesel though. I've literally ever heard in my life. I've never heard a diesel flutter like that. Well Matt. Alright. High five. You just did some sick work. She's bloody running. stoke thanks so much eh? right back in jesse's car now we're heading home matt's done a killer job the exhaust sounds perfect um we just couldn't keep romping on it because there's plus 30 injectors in it uh it's obviously not tuned yet but hopefully in the next video we'll be tidying stuff up getting it ready for the tune then taking it to the dyno i think after then with the four inch intake the snorkel and all that oh, yeah. it's literally going to sound like a rocket I can't even describe how good it sounds in person. It's just nuts. We are heading home, so thanks guys for watching. Appreciate it as always. Thanks Jesse for filming. It's all right. It's all right, <laughs> and thanks Matt and the team at King Fab Customs for all their hard work. Literally blow me out of the water with quality. If you guys want any fabrication stuff done, full custom builds, circles, air boxes, custom pipe work, go see Matt, King Fab Customs. Absolutely awesome bloke and solid work. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next episode. Bye. And I'm like me too No roof on my top And my babe see through Hating on the pen don't stop They ain't gon' feed you I been all on my grind So why I need you Baby girl love my bob And I'm like me too